Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, today we're going to be talking about more conspiracy theories. So last time we talked about how Hillary Clinton could possibly be hiding some serious illness. And today the Hillary Clinton conspiracies just get even creepier. Now this first one adds to the idea that Hillary might really be sick and might not be able to come out in public. And maybe some of the speeches she's been doing live are actually on a green screen. Okay, so Hillary Clinton did a speech in North Carolina and there's a few things about the footage that look shady. So the first thing that was weird about the footage was the people in the crowd all had their phones out and they were filming what was happening. But if you look at their phones, like in front of them there's flags on the phone screen, no flags. When Hillary walks by, you don't see her on their phone screens. Take a look. I want you to take notice of these cameras and the phones. Where, where's the background? Here comes Hillary. Where are the flags on these people's phones? Where are the flags? Here comes Hillary. Here comes Hillary. Watch this guy to the left's phone. Watch his phone. Where is she? Where's Hillary? See what I mean? Fucking weird. Now the commentary on that clip, by the way, is from a YouTuber named Victorus, and he went through the whole thing and showed a lot of creepy moments. But before we get to the creepier moments, I want to talk more about the phones. So I made a movie a few years ago, you guys might remember, Not Cool, and I had a lot of scenes where people were on phones or they were filming something, and we had to use green screen. Now when you put in an image over a green screen phone, it has a certain look to it. It never looks cool quite real, it kind of looks too bright, too saturated. And if you really look at the phone screens, you can tell that there's something off. You can tell that they're too saturated, that they're a little too blurry or a little too crystal clear. It just does not look real. Trust me, I've done green screen. It looks like green screen. Now the next thing that happens is really fucking creepy. While she's talking on stage, she starts glitching. Her and the podium and the microphone all start glitching, but the background stays the same. Fine, maybe the camera was having problems, whatever. Then, she glitches and fucking disappears. Check it out. What the fuck? The flag behind her? Fine, she disappears. Which makes me think that the flag was just a background and she was composited on top of it because it's green screen and then it glitched and she's gone. But possibly the weirdest thing about this speech was the fact that at the end of it, when she's like waving goodbye to everybody, she turns around and starts pointing and waving to people that aren't there. Look. Okay, here we go. Who's she waving to, folks? I'm not sure. She's looking directly straight at a flag and waving and now a point. Okay, I'm done. I mean, listen, if it's not green screen, there's something else fucking weird going on, right? Like. What? So some people think maybe she was like in a hospital or something and they set up a green screen and she couldn't leave the hospital so she did it there. Some people are saying maybe it was a hologram, maybe it was pre-recorded, and then some people are saying maybe she's a robot. Listen, <laughs> I don't believe that one. Although this clip came out of her clapping and it looks like a robot glitching. I mean... It's a robot to me. So the next theory about Hillary Clinton is that she has a body double. So a lot of people think that because she's sick, she's sending out this body double to do speeches, to go out in public, basically go out and do all the stuff she can't do right now because she's sick. So recently at a 9-11 memorial, Hillary Clinton was on her way to the car and she passed out. So then after she had that pretty dramatic pass out, like two hours later, she was standing in front of an apartment building looking great, like nothing ever happened. The internet is lighting up with conspiracy theories claiming this is not Hillary Clinton, but a body double. So obviously a lot of people were confused. They're like, what, didn't you like just almost die? And now you're like, hey queen, like what just happened? And that's when the body double theory started happening. So people started taking pictures and putting them side by side of what she looked like before she passed out and what she looked like when she came out of that apartment. And they started noticing a lot of differences. Hillary seemed in good spirits as she emerged from her daughter Chelsea's apartment Sunday after collapsing at the 9-11 memorial ceremony. But the Twitterverse erupted. Nose looks very different. This isn't Hillary. I mean, you can see, after she came out of that apartment, her skin looked a little more flawless. Her hairline looked a little bit different. She had a widow's peak before and she didn't after. And she just all around just doesn't look the same. It looks like her, but there's something off. 
Well, then they did a side-by-side -side of her full body. Her hips looked a little wider. She just didn't really look like the same body type. Now listen, I'm not body shaming. I think Hillary Clinton looks great. She looks great for her age. I'm just saying the body looks a little different. Now this is where it gets even weirder. There is a woman out there who looks just like Hillary Clinton, who has done a bunch of press and has done a bunch of reality shows and stuff being Hillary Clinton. And she fucking looks just like her. So her name is Teresa Barnwell. And she's come out recently and said that that was not her outside of the apartment and that she's not Hillary's body double, but I mean, if she was, would she really admit it? And celebrities use body doubles all the time. Jim Carrey talked about in an interview how he used a body double when he went on vacation because he just wanted to like go travel around town. So he had a body double at his hotel room pretending to hang out there and paparazzi would stay there. I mean, Britney Spears even made an entire music video about it where like her and all her body doubles were going to the club and tried to trick the paparazzi. You want a piece of me? So is it that out of the realm of possibility that maybe Hillary Clinton is using a body double? It's more realistic than she's a robot. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about isn't really a conspiracy theory. It's more of like a hoax, but I fell down a hole the other night and I was so fascinated by it. I was like, I gotta fucking talk about this. So there's something called faith healing. And if you haven't heard of it, it is fucked up. So it started in the eighties and these preachers would go on tour for thousands of people and they pretend like they could hear God. And all the people in the audience would have problems, like they'd have cancer or they'd have family members who were sick and they would want help. So this preacher would say, oh, God is telling me that you have cancer and he'd point to somebody and then he'd walk over to them and then he'd pray and then he'd push them down as if Jesus like went through his body and it would knock them over and then he'd be like, you're healed. Spoiler alert, they're not healed. They just paid a shitload of money to be there and that guy's not talking to God. So the first really famous faith healer was a guy named Peter Popoff, and it was in the 1980s. He was making millions of dollars a year, traveling around different cities, talking to thousands of people, and healing hundreds of them. You've got cancer of the stomach? Are you ready for God to burn that cancer out? Here it goes in the mighty... Devil, back off. Back off, devil! God told me, he said, you smite that cancer with your fist. Yeah, it's the same face I'd be making, little boy. <laughs> what the fuck is this guy talking about? Well, people actually believed him. Check it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You really believe you're healed? Yes. Well, then a man named James Randi came along. So James Randi was famous for exposing people for being fake. He would expose magicians, psychics, and now he wanted to expose the faith healer. So James Randi knew that there was no way God was talking to Peter and he was like, how do I figure this out? So he went to one of the live shows, brought a radio, and found the right frequency and heard who was talking to Peter. And guess what? It wasn't God. Hello, Petey. Can you hear me? If you can't, you're in trouble. Is it Popoff was being prompted by his wife through a wireless earpiece. Johnson. She'd gotten her information from prayer cards filled out by the faithful before the show began. She lives at 1627 10th Street. 1627 10th Street? Is that right? That's right. She has arthritis all over. Burning this arthritis right out of your body? Yeah, fucking crazy. It was his wife talking to him the whole time. All these people were being lied to. And you know what the scary part is? He's still doing it. He's literally still around. Check it out. I'll give you the word. I'll tell you when to move. I'll give you the date. I'll tell you the time. I'll tell you the hour. And as you heed the prophetic direction, God is going to open up doors. I know, it's fucking awful and crazy. Crazy. And that guy is fucking going to hell. If you believe in hell, he's fucking going there. But he's not alone, because there's another man who's doing it on an even bigger scale. His name is Benny Hinn. So Benny Hinn is a faith healer who's been working for a long time, and he's still around today, and he's making hundreds of million dollars a year. He's even more successful than Peter. He has a private plane, he wears fancy clothes, he lives in mansions. I mean, the guy is literally living off of other people's pain. He even has a Twitter and a Periscope. Like, he's up to date with a new technology. It's fucking weird. So here's a clip from this year of Benny Hinn performing his miracle. He's diagnosed with cancer of the stomach. In Jesus' name, be healed, brother. Be done with it. 
What? Like literally, who would believe that? Like you have to be so desperate and in so much pain to believe that, which makes it even fucking sadder. And he's never really healed anybody. Just check out this clip where this little boy was healed of his blindness and then, well, there was an update. And spoiler alert, he wasn't. Nine-year-old William Vandenkolk claimed his failing eyesight had improved at this Hin crusade in 2001. As soon as God healed me, I could see better. William is now 17 and still legally blind. I'd say I was caught up in the moment, being as young as I was, thinking I could actually be getting my vision back. Yeah. Kid is still blind. But what makes this even more disgusting is that he's not only getting money from the people in the audience, he's getting money from people who are watching at home. So at the end of every episode of his show, he has another preacher come on and explain that if people at home want prayers from the preachers, all they have to do is send in some money and then they'll pray for them. Check it out. You're gonna put a seed in the ground. And the seed you're gonna put in the ground is gonna manifest God's getting ready to release an anointing, an anointing of insight and direction where you will not be ignorant of Satan's devices. This is what the Holy Ghost told me to tell you to sow. I want 200 of you to sow a seed of $123.20. Listen, everybody involved in that situation, fuck you, you fucking asshole. Fuck off. I'm so mad about it. Okay, so this last conspiracy we're gonna talk about is one of my favorite topics of all time. No, it is not the Mandela effect, but it kind of deals with that a little bit. And that is time travel. So I've talked about time travel before. I stick by this. Time travel is real because it's time. It might take us a million years to figure it out, but in a million years, we'll have figured it out and they'll be able to come back through time. So that means people are doing it right now because time is like this. Time goes back and forth. The future has already happened, but I'm not a scientist and I'm not gonna get into that whole side of it, but I am gonna give you some really creepy little pieces of evidence to prove to you time travel is real. First is this clip that came out. It is fucking so weird. Now this is a clip of a car appearing out of nowhere. Check it out. What? <laughs> the car fucking appeared out of nowhere. That was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And I looked, I couldn't find the source of this. I couldn't find any proof that it was fake. It's just out there. Now this next piece of evidence is in an old Greek statue. Now in this Greek statue is a carving of what looks to be a little girl holding a laptop for her Greek goddess. Yeah, holding a laptop. There's even little USB ports on the side. What the fuck? And some people are like, oh, it's just like a small box. Like, no. That's a fucking laptop. What box is that small and shallow? Like, what would that even hold? I mean, maybe a necklace or something, but whatever. Just let me live. Okay, so this next picture was taken in 1917. And if you look close, there's a guy inside of the picture who looks like he's from the 1990s. He has long, shaggy hair. He's wearing a t-shirt. He's wearing shorts, which is not the style of 1917. I mean, just look at some of these pictures. No shorts, no t-shirts, no, like, long, shaggy hair. Everybody looked very pompous and had, like, their suspenders and their pants and their hair slicked back. That guy clearly was not from that time period. And if he was, he was just very ahead of his time. So here's another carving that happened in the 1600s and it's of an astronaut. Check it out. Okay. What the fuck? Like, I don't know how you could debunk that. That's a fucking astronaut. Like, you put that side by side with an astronaut, that's a fucking astronaut. So how was that carved in the 1600s? Did they have a vision? Did they know it was coming? Or did somebody travel through time? Carmen. Okay, so last time we talked about time travel, I showed you pictures of celebrities who look like people from hundreds of years ago, and I have a few more. So here's one of John Travolta. Here's one of Rupert Grint. Here's one of Johnny Depp. And here's one of Peter Dinklage. And this one is fucking uncanny. There also is one of Glenn Close, but <laughs> to show it. Now I fucked up for that. Now there's a theory on time travel that kind of makes sense, but we'll never know if it's real or not. And that is that Bill Gates created it. 
So Bill Gates had an idea for time travel, and he called it TimeGate. Now his idea was that you can go back in time and fix any business decisions that might have been fucked up. And in a speech, he said this. Do you remember when Biff went back in time and back to the future? Yeah, I can seriously only do worse at this point. So he's admitting that time travel probably would be a bad idea and something would go wrong. But that makes me think, is that trial by error? Did he already create it? Did he already go back in time? Did he already mess something up? Is that the Mandela effect? Either way, I really hope it's real. There you guys go. Hopefully you enjoyed the conspiracies today, and hopefully you enjoyed my fucked up hair. I'm sorry. If you want me to do more conspiracy theory videos, please give me a thumbs up so I know. Also subscribe to my channel right down below. I make new videos every single day. And if you want to see all my other conspiracy theory videos, or videos where I talk about creepy stuff, or death, I'll put a link to a playlist right at the top of the description below. Alright you little theorists, I'll see you tomorrow. Time travel. <laughs> Pretty much, 99.9% .9 of the time, when I meet people in public, they are Mexican. And they are with their Mexican families, and the Mexican families are like, Yes, see bitch, see puta. And they're like, you're fucking crazy, and we fucking love you, and we love when you make Mexican jokes. And I'm like, I can't make them anymore, it's 2016. And they're like, cállate la boca, tú es gordo, and we miss the old chain. I still don't know what gordo means, but I think it means cool.